forcing healthcare workers to the very brink of exhaustion themselves, forcing those on the very front lines who keep life moving day in and day out to make hard choices about how to protect themselves, their families, or keep food on the table. It's been an unprecedented year in the midst of the racial reckoning in America where the truth of our racist past and the prevalence of white supremacy has once again been uncloaked and unveiled. This has been an unprecedented year after an economic recovery, once again, uh, an unprecedented economic relapse uh, that has yielded a deeper divide between the haves and the have nots, uh, political upheaval, uh, challenges to our most closely held and fiercely fought over democratic principles. Uh, the literal forcing of church uh, outside of the bounds of the walls. Uh, I could go on and on and on about the challenges uh, of this year, uh, how unprecedented uh, time after time, uh, just when we thought we'd seen it all, uh, something else happens uh, to replace what we thought uh, was the epitome of having seen it all. Uh, I don't know about you, beloved, but I have entered, uh, amen, into this last part of the year, uh, somewhat weary, somewhat weak, somewhat worn, uh, hoping and praying and looking for something better. Uh, and I'm so glad uh, that God specializes uh, in better. Anybody know that the God we serve uh, specializes in better? Uh, I want on this last Sunday of the year to encourage you, uh, my brother and my sister, uh, that there is something better coming. There is something better to look forward to. There is something better than what we've been through. How do I know? I'm so glad you asked because my Bible tells me so. Would you turn with me to Isaiah chapter 61? It's a short chapter, my beloved. I pray that in your leisure time today, you'll take the time to read, amen, not just Isaiah 61, but that you will reach back and read Isaiah 60, 61, and 62. Uh, for uh, just the moment now, if I could just lift up for you the first few verses of Isaiah 61 from the New Living Translation, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me, for the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to comfort the brokenhearted and to proclaim that captives will be released and prisoners will be freed. He has sent me to tell those who mourn that the time of the Lord's favor has come and with it the day of God's anger against their enemies. To all who mourn in Israel, he will give a crown of beauty for ashes, a joyous blessing instead of mourning, festive praise instead of despair. In their righteousness, they will be like great oaks that the Lord has planted for his own glory. I have read for you Isaiah 61, 1 through 4. Uh, for the time that is mine, I would ask you to consider this subject uh, something to look forward to. Something to look forward to. Two, uh, the truth of the matter is uh, uh, that some of us uh, are just praying that 2020, if the Lord allows us to live to see it, will not be a repeat of 2021, will not be a repeat of 2020. Amen. Uh, some of us are praying that we can leave 2020 uh, in the annals of history, never to be visited again. Uh, it's interesting uh, to me that the year that we've been through has been so challenging that we find ourselves on the precipice of the new year trying to hurry time along. Some of us can't wait to get to 2021 if for no other reason than the hope that there is something better to look forward to. I, I don't know about you, but as I study the word of God, I recognize that Isaiah 60, 61, and 62 promise great things to the people of Jerusalem and record the rejoicing that they will experience upon the fulfillment of those promises. Anybody looking forward to being able to rejoice today? These chapters then constitute an 
optimistic, joyful unit, a, a number of themes, including light and righteousness, salvation and joy are repeated throughout the chapters. The former exiles have returned to Jerusalem after a lengthy exile that challenged their faith in Yahweh. Anybody want to be honest today and say that after everything you've been through, that you can look back and see times when you had to wonder where is God, times when you had to wonder what is God up to, times when you had to wonder does God know what's going on with me, anybody had to wonder and will be honest and say I've wondered Lord when are you coming to help, I don't know about you but I can relate then to these former exiles having returned to Jerusalem after a lengthy time away after a lengthy time in captivity, a lengthy time in bondage. Uh, for us, it's been a lengthy time of social distancing. It's been a lengthy time of mask wearing. It's been a lengthy time of not going to concerts, a lengthy time of missing movies and restaurants, a lengthy time of leisure travel and visiting with family, a, a, a lengthy time since we came into the house of God and found ourselves in the sanctuary and in the beauty of the sanctuary that we know to be the church. It's been a lengthy time. Here we can relate then uh, to then uh, after Cyrus of uh, Persia had defeated the Babylonians and instituted a new policy. And instead of subjugating uh, uh, the Jewish exile, Cyrus uh, would allow them to return to Jerusalem and even provided the funds to finance the rebuilding of the temple. Uh, however, you know the story. Uh, when they got back to Jerusalem, these former exiles found that Yahweh, who, who had made possible their return, uh, had not seen fit to make the task easy. Uh, can I get a witness? amen. Uh, sometimes, uh, amen, when God opens the door, uh, it's still not easy getting through it. Uh, the books of Ezra and Nehemiah tell the story of the restoration of Jerusalem and its temple. Um, the returned exiles experienced opposition from local people, and the project ended up grinding to a halt. Uh, they experienced then new obstacles, uh, cr which created a crisis in their faith uh, in much the same way as the exile did. Yes, Yahweh made it possible for them to escape their bondage in Babylonia. Yes, that he had earlier made it possible for their ancestors to escape slavery in Egypt. However, just as the earlier Israelites had experienced obstacles in their own wilderness journey that caused them to grumble and to doubt Yahweh, so also these former exiles who had returned to Jerusalem are experiencing obstacles that create a similar crisis of faith for them. Yahweh has allowed them to return, but has, a, has also permitted opponents to dog them at every turn. Uh, is Yahweh powerless to achieve what he promised, they wonder? Uh, is Yahweh faithful? Will he keep his promises? Uh, has Yahweh given up and simply abandoned them? Uh, here in Isaiah, we discover then some of these same questions uh, uh, that we, uh, we see the people are still in exile. Uh, Yahweh is a passionate God uh, who is in uh, labor, amen, as he achieves his goals. God is working on something. Uh, he's up to something. Uh, I stopped by to tell somebody today that even as you study then uh, the experience of the Israelites returning from exile, uh, where they were certainly grateful uh, for the release out of bondage, Bondage, but they also found that they were facing some obstacles. Uh, I want somebody to know that even as we leave the bondage of 2020, the challenges of 2020, the changes of 2020, uh, that no matter what we face, uh, there's still something uh, to look forward to. Uh, I don't know about you, uh, but I'm excited about what God is doing uh, in this season. Uh, yes, uh, uh, there's a spirit of exhaustion and weariness. Uh, Yes, there's a question mark of what's going to happen next and how does it all turn out? But can I tell you, uh, there is no question uh, about who is in control and who is in charge. There is something, beloved, to look forward to. How, Pastor, can you say there's something to look forward to uh, given all that's happened this year, uh, given what's going on right now, uh, government on the precipice of shutdown, uh, those who are unemployed and underemployed, 
avoid a, a missed Christmas because Congress and the president couldn't get together and do a deal. How can you say there's something to look forward to? It's found in the word of God. It's in the Isaiah 61 text. Hear then what the word says. My Bible says it's good news for the oppressed. Amen. The good news for the oppressed, the oppressed, the suppressed. Amen. And the depressed. Can I tell somebody? Uh, Isaiah makes a pronunciation here. Uh, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me. Uh, for the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. Uh, he has sent me to comfort the brokenhearted uh, and to proclaim that captives will be released uh, and prisoners will be freed. Uh, I don't know about you, uh, but I get excited every time I encounter uh, a reference to Jesus. Uh, every time, uh, amen, uh, I'm reminded that he is the one who was prophesied of. Uh, uh, Jesus uh, uh, records, uh, amen, in the New Testament, uh, Jesus preaches from this same text. Uh, he affirms himself uh, uh, using the word of God. Uh, there's something to look forward to, my beloved. Uh, anytime you stand on the word of God uh, and his precious promises, uh, it means you have something uh, to look forward to. Uh, look what Jesus said. Uh, uh, be careful, my beloved, uh, how you see it. Uh, he pronounces, Isaiah pronounces, uh, that the spirit of the Lord uh, is upon me. Uh, can I tell somebody uh, that if you get a good dose of God's spirit, uh, if you allow the Holy Ghost uh, to take up residence in your life, uh, if you yield to his Holy Spirit, uh, and he promised us uh, that after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, uh, you will have power. Uh, some of us right now are uh, feeling powerless. Uh, feeling like we don't matter, uh, feeling like we can't move and can't get anything done. Uh, I stop by to tell somebody, uh, you've got something to look forward to uh, when the Lord, uh, when his spirit falls on you. Uh, you've got something to look forward to uh, when the Holy Ghost gets a hold of you. Uh, how do I know uh, that you've got something to look forward to? Uh, I'm not talking about cars uh, or cash. I'm not talking about the roar of the crowd, uh, but I'm talking about something greater uh, that we can look forward to. Uh, Isaiah said uh, that after the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me, uh, he gives a purpose. Uh, not only do I get power, uh, but I get purpose when God's spirit is upon me. Uh, I'm looking forward uh, to greater purpose in my life. Uh, he says, for the Lord has anointed me. That is, God has assigned his power to me. God's power is covering me. God's power is indwelling me. And not just for me, but rather because God wants to use me. Not only can I stand on the promise, but I can seek God's purpose. There's something to look forward to in the new year. For God has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. Now, you know, Know what? I can bring good news to the poor, even if I'm among the poor. Amen. He said he's anointed me to bring good news. He sent me to comfort the brokenhearted and to proclaim that captives will be released. There's something to look forward to. If you are in that category where you're feeling poor, I don't just mean poor in your bank account, but poor in your spirit, poor in your physical flesh, uh, poor in your mental health. Uh, if you don't have it all together, uh, God sent someone named Jesus uh, to bring some good news. Uh, I don't know about you, uh, but I'm grateful uh, that I've got something to look forward to uh, when my heart is breaking. Uh, this year, uh, we've said see you after a while to way too many of our loved ones. Uh, this year, uh, we've had to release them uh, as they cross the chilly Jordan. Uh, we've not been able to be with them physically in many respects. Sometimes we've not been able to mourn in our own tradition. We've not been able to come together to worship and celebrate their lives. But I'm glad that I've got something better to look forward to. He said he sent him to comfort the brokenhearted. Anybody glad to know that while your heart may be breaking right now, while you might be struggling with grief right now, while there 
there might be sorrow uh, sitting on your heart right now uh, that God sent one who knows how to comfort you uh, and keep me. Uh, I don't know about you, but I've got something uh, to look forward to. Uh, every time the enemy thinks uh, that he has me in his grip, uh, every time sin thinks that it has tripped me up, uh, every time uh, my flesh thinks uh, it is one out, uh, I'm glad that the word of God says uh, that he was sent uh, not only to comfort the brokenhearted, ah, uh, uh, not only was he sent uh, uh, then to bring good news to the poor, uh, but he was sent uh, to proclaim, uh, that means to announce, uh, to speak over, uh, that captives will be released uh, if you this morning have something binding you, if you this morning are living a life of sin, if you this morning don't have it all together, if you this morning feel trapped and you don't see a way out, I stop by to tell you that you've got something to look forward to. How do I know? The Bible says that Christ was sent to proclaim that captives will be released. Hey, not only that, and that prisoners will be free. Some of us, amen, live in our own prison, a prison of our mind, prison of our heart, a prison of our spirit, a prisons of our flesh. But the Bible says that he's been sent uh, to proclaim that captives will be released. You ought to look forward then to your day of freedom, to your day of release. The Bible says who the sun sets free is free indeed. Is there anybody worshiping on the platform who can testify? I am free. I am free. Praise the Lord. I'm free. Anybody testify that I haven't always on a Sunday morning been in worship? Can anybody testify that the Lord took some appetites that I used to have and freed me from them? Can anybody testify that the Lord took my attitude and turned it around? Can anybody testify that you're walking in freedom today? There's something better to look forward to. Yes, it's been a tough year. Yes, we've been through some stuff. Yes, it's been difficult, but I'm so glad that I've got a testimony. I'm so glad that there's something better, that I've got something to look forward to. I'm not looking for a repeat of 2020. I'm not looking for a repeat of its problems. I'm not looking for a repeat of its perils. I'm looking for uh, something better, uh, something greater. Uh, even as I look in the word of God, uh, the Bible says in Isaiah 61 and 3, uh, to all who mourn in Israel, uh, uh, to everybody uh, who has had uh, to really come to grips uh, this morning in Sunday school, uh, somebody said repentance is uh, looking at yourself honestly. Uh, uh, repentance is uh, telling the truth about your own sin. Uh, repentance is uh, uh, acknowledging Acknowledging that no good thing dwells in your flesh. Here then, when Jesus was teaching in the Sermon on the Mount, he said, blessed are they who mourn, those who recognize their brokenness because of sin, those who are not looking at the speck in their neighbor's eye, but those who recognize that they've got a beam in their own eye, that they've got their own stuff that needs to be cleaned up. Aren't you glad to all who mourn, to all of us, who are willing to acknowledge that we are sinful creatures. Those of us who are willing to acknowledge that we've not dotted every I, we fail to cross every T. Those of us who will acknowledge that in our flesh, where there dwells no good thing, that we've given in to sin at times. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad the word of God says I can look forward in my morning. My M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G in my morning, he'll give me a, a crown of beauty for my ashes. In other words, my beloved, you might be mourning right now. You might have some regrets, some disappointments in yourself. You might have to come clean about some things, but I want you to know that that mourning, that sense of heaviness, the Lord will replace it. The Bible says he'll give you a crown of beauty for your ashes. I don't know about you. I'm grateful. He goes on to say that you'll get a 
your joyous blessing instead of mourning. Right there ought to be your praise point. Right there ought to be a time to dance. Right there ought to be a moment to lift up holy hands. Not only can I stand on God's promise, ah, something to look forward to, God fulfilling his promises. I can seek God's power. Ah, and after the Holy Ghost has come upon me, the Bible says I shall receive power. And then after I stand on his promise, after I seek his power, aren't you glad to know? The Bible says that festive praise will be the mark instead of despair. Come here, somebody, testify that you've had enough despair. You've had enough depression. You've had enough disappointment. You've had enough with this disease, whatever it is that is calling me, causing me dis-ease, whatever disease you have, we all have some disease, some dis-ease in our lives, some illness in our mind, our body, our flesh, our spirit, our hearts, our homes, our relationships. <clears throat> but I'm so glad. I'm thanking God that he said that there is going to come festive praise instead of despair. Anybody know that praise is always better than a pity party? Anybody know that praise is always better than sitting in despair? Anybody recognize that every time you open your mouth to praise God, the enemy doesn't know what to do with praise? Anybody understand that praise is a weapon? Anybody understand that every time you get to worshiping, every time you get to blessing him, every time you get to thanking him, even when life is coming at you hard, even in the midst of a global pandemic, I made up my mind, I'm gonna praise him as if today is my last day. Why? Because God inhabits the praises of his people. Anybody want God to come close to you? Anybody want God to show up at your house. Anybody want God to stop by your house when he's in your neighborhood? I dare you to praise him. I dare you to let him turn your morning into dancing. I dare you to let him to turn your sorrowing into joy. Here Isaiah is speaking to Israel and to you and to me. Here Isaiah is reminding us that Jesus came with a purpose. That Jesus, that as he came into the world, not just as an itty bitty baby, but even as he grew up and the spirit of God fell on him, that God gave him a purpose, that God was operating in a plan, that God would use him to restore our connection and our relationship to him. I don't know about you, but I'm excited by this text. I don't know about you, but I'm excited to hear in verse number two, that he has sent me to tell those who mourn that the time of the Lord's favor has come. I stopped by this Sunday morning, the last Sunday of 2020, to tell somebody you've got something to look forward to, not with dread and not with despair, not in depression, but something better because God has spoken. He sent the Lord Jesus Christ to announce to tell somebody, uh, to all of us uh, who've been struggling, uh, all of us who've been mourning, uh, all of us who've been in despair, uh, all of us who have lost some things, uh, all of us who said farewell to loved ones, uh, that there's something else to look forward to. I don't know about you, but I'm thanking God uh, that there's something else to looking forward to. I'm looking for, I'm standing uh, on the promises. I'm seeking God's power. And then I want to share uh, uh, with you and others through a praise. I want somebody to know that God is still on the throne. He's still able and there's still something uh, to look forward to. Uh, I don't know about you. The Bible says that in their righteousness, uh, ah, here is the crux of the matter, my beloved. That is that I can't 
can't live any kind of way. I can't show up any kind of way, but rather I've got to put on the robe of righteousness. I've got to allow him to be my righteousness. I've got to be dressed in his righteousness alone that he said that in their righteousness, look what he said about us. I'm looking forward to this. They will be like great oaks that the Lord has planted for his own glory. If you know anything about the oak tree, my beloved, if you know anything about an oak tree, God, you know, right now in the name of Jesus, an oak tree, deep roots, amen, that run down deep roots that wrap around one another, that anchor that tree, that tree, amen, winds will blow, rains will fall, storms will come, lightning will flash, and while the oak tree oftentimes in no breeze stands tall, an oak tree may sway a little bit, amen, when the winds come, an oak tree may sway a little bit when the storm rises, the oak tree may bend a little bit, but aren't you glad to know that the oak tree, the oak tree has a, a strength, an oak tree won't break in the midst of the storm, I don't know about you, but this year, amen, God has been speaking to us, God has been strengthening us, God has been shifting us, and I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to what God has in this next season, I'm believing that we've got something to look forward to. The Bible says that in our righteousness, we will be like great oak trees that the Lord has planted for his own glory. Anybody know that even in the midst of a global pandemic, even in the midst of a racial reckoning, even in the midst of an economic collapse, even in the midst of political upheaval, that it didn't break you. Anybody glad that you're still here? Anybody glad that you're still standing. Uh, some of us, amen, might be standing on the only good leg we have left. Uh, some of us might be standing on just barely, barely, barely solid ground. Some of us might be holding on with everything we've got, but thanks be to God uh, who gives us victory we're still standing. And therefore, my beloved, we have something to look forward to. Ah, you got to read it. You got to study the word of God for yourself. My time is almost up. But can I tell you, beloved, can I give you a hint that there is something to look forward to? No, I'm not talking about the day when you don't have to wear a mask. I'm not talking about the day when we can get more than six feet in each other's presence. I'm not talking about the day when we can eat at whatever restaurant we want to. Uh, I'm not talking about the day when we can fly here, there, and everywhere. Uh, I'm not talking about the day when we have more money in the bank. I'm not talking about that. Rather, I'm talking about uh, uh, what I'm looking forward to is what Isaiah says in Isaiah 61, 4. Uh, not only then will our righteousness cause us to be like great oaks that the Lord has planted for his own glory. I might be in beloved, but I'm grateful to God that I haven't broken in this season. The Bible says they will rebuild the ancient ruins, repairing cities destroyed long ago. They will revive them, though they have been deserted for many generations. Foreigners will be your servants. They will feed your flocks and plow your fields and tend your vineyards. You will be called priests of the Lord, ministers of our God. He goes on, verse number seven said, instead of shame and dishonor, you will, you will enjoy a double shame of honor. You will possess a double portion of prosperity in your land and everlasting joy will be yours. I don't know about you, but my testimony this morning is he turned my, my morning into dancing. This morning, anybody glad to know that you have made it this far? Not because you cute, not because you have a hundred degrees on the wall, not because you know all the right people, but because you know the king of kings and the Lord of Lords. Anybody glad to know that Christ was born to die? Anybody glad to know that the anointing was on him for purpose? Amen. Aren't you glad this morning to celebrate the Lord Jesus Christ? not just the little bitty baby that was wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid in a manger, born, born, born in Bethlehem. But is anybody celebrating the Lord Jesus Christ, who even as he grew in wisdom, knowledge, strength, he decided to die? Anybody glad to know that while he could have called 10,000 angels just to be right by his side, to gather him up so that he wouldn't even dash his foot on a stone, is anybody glad that he decided to 
stay right there at Calvary. Uh, anybody glad that he hung from the sixth to the ninth hour? Uh, anybody glad uh, that he yielded, was obedient to his father, even to the point of death, that you and I might have a right to everlasting life? Uh, that's what Isaiah is talking about. Uh, he sent him. Uh, he anointed him. Uh, he appointed him uh, just for you and just for me. Uh, I don't know about you, my beloved, but I can confess that last year, uh, this last year has been a trip, amen, uh, that this last year has been challenging and difficult and at times despairing, but I'm so thankful uh, for the announcement that Isaiah makes uh, in Isaiah 61, for the reminder uh, that he gives us that Christ came, uh, uh, amen, for purpose and that because uh, he was anointed uh, to bring good news, uh, because uh, he came to comfort the brokenhearted, uh, because he came to proclaim release of captives and prisoners of freedom, then that he came to tell those who are mourning that the time of the Lord's favor had come. Aren't you glad to know that this is the time of the Lord's favor? We speak it over you right now in the name of Jesus, not because, amen, we're all that deep, but because God is moving. There are signs, amen, even in the earth realm that God has been up to something. He's still up to something. And anytime God is moving, we've got something better to look forward to. So beloved, as you come to the end of the year, I pray that you won't be stuck in a pity party about how bad it was. I pray, amen, that you won't be in the place where you need to rehearse every single trial and tribulation and trip. I pray that instead of reciting all that was wrong, you might uh, uh, turn your face forward. Uh, you might be like Paul, forgetting those things that are behind and pressing forward for the things that are yet ahead. I, I pray uh, that a spirit of expectation has taken over you, descended in your home. I pray that you're anticipating God to move in a mighty and awesome way. I pray uh, that you are standing on the promises of God. Uh, I pray uh, that right now in the name of Jesus, uh, if you don't feel like you have any power, that you're praying, that you're asking the Lord for a double dose of the Holy Ghost, that you're reminding him that Christ promised after the Holy Ghost would come upon us, that we would have power. I pray right now that you are right where you are sharing a praise. I pray right now that you're lifting up holy hands. I pray right now that somebody will give him a wave offering. I pray right now that somebody has reclaimed their dance. 